We present Kenneth Williams, Derek Nimmo, Clement Freud and Sheila Hancock in just a minute. And as the minute waltz fades away, here to tell you about it is our chairman, Nicholas Parsons. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. And welcome once again to Just a Minute. And once again, we have four inveterate players of the game who are going to compete against each other and try and speak for just a minute on some unlikely subject that I will give them without hesitation, without repetition, and without deviating at all if they can. And the others will score point accordingly. And to those of you who may be new to the game, the scoring, I hope, will become obvious as we progress. Clement Freud, will you begin the show this week? The subject is watchdogs. Can you talk for 60 seconds on that subject starting now? This is a very valuable animal to have around the house, and we have got one who sleeps quite heavily. So every morning when he misses the postman, he gets up and barks the letters. <laughs> this is an embarrassment because it wakes us up at varying times of the day. Uh, uh, Kenneth Williams, you challenge. Hesitation. Hesitation it was, Kenneth. Mm -hmm. So you point. score our first point. <clears throat> I agree with your challenge, you get a point, <laughs> and you take over the subject. There are 43 seconds left for watchdogs starting now. I had one once in Cornwall, and we used to go on the beach together, and it was great fun. We used to romp up and down, and his particular cleverness was being able to tell in advance exactly what sort of person was approaching. In fact, when I had this, uh, well, in Queen McCord, uh, Clement, <laughs> 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 uh, hesitation. Hesitation, I quite agree, Clement. So you gain a point and you take over the subject. 29 seconds left. Watchdogs starting now. On many building sites, they employ Alsatians, which are used solely to stop intruders from coming along and taking away impedimenta that are left there by the contractors. <laughs> These dogs are trained in particular kennels where they're taught to recognize those who have no. Uh, Derek Nimmo, you've challenged. Hesitation. I disagree entirely. I thought so. Might, as yes. I disagree, <laughs> <laughs> Clement Freud has another point and continues with the subject. Six seconds left. Watchdogs starting now. But many other canine species can be trained to do this sort of work, among which poodles, sheepdogs, Labradors. <laughs> <laughs> The whistle tells us that 60 seconds is up, and whoever is speaking at the time of the whistle going gains an extra point. This time it was Clement Freud, so he has a lead over Kenneth Williams at the end of the first round. The other two have yet to score. Kenneth, will you begin the next round? The subject is something I'm sure you are most adept at, creating. Will you speak for 60 seconds on that subject, starting now? All human beings indulge in this activity simply because their intellectual equipment will allow them to do so. And the fact that they speak with any kind of articulate fluency, volatile nature, call it what you will, will denote the amount that their intellectual faculty is allowing them to exhibit. Of course, making is what we would equate the word with, and my first essay in this sphere was in making a... <laughs> Derek Nimmer, you challenged one. A repetition of making, with a touch of hesitation. <laughs> there was more than a touch of hesitation, I think, and there was a repetition of making. So, Derek, you gain a point, and you <laughs> take over the subject. 31 seconds left, creating, starting now. What I like creating in particular are models of seven, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Uh, <laughs> Sheila Hancock, you challenged one. Yes, it yes. wasn't quite It wasn't so much hesitation as a flap. <laughs> fluff. Yeah. Definite fluff. <laughs> well, his definite fluff gains Sheila a point, who takes over the subject 27 seconds for creating starting now. I always envy creative artists. You see, when you're an actress, you're just an interpretive artist. But I think to be able to look at a picture and think I made that would be the most exciting thing in the world. Or a piece of music. <laughs> Kenneth Williams, you challenge. A deviation. She's what? discussing not creating, she's just interpreting. <laughs> so it's not like I wasn't. I was talking about making a picture. I, I was about being an think... interpretive artist, that's what yes, she said. Yes, she was, but mm. I think she was comparing it to being a creative artist. So therefore, I'm still with Sheila Hancock, <laughs> who has her. An, uh, her oh, she's got two points now. And Sheila, you continue with 14 seconds creating, starting now. Composing a piece of music. Or writing a book or a play. Derek Nimmo, why do you repetition of composing a piece of music? 
Have you said that before? Yes, she? I think I did. I oh, have to she's admit. so honest. Oh, yes. marvelous. Well, what a nice girl to have around. <laughs> Derek Nemo, there are 11 seconds for creating starting now. So off I go with my little hammer and I bang a nail into a piece of wood. This I'm turning into a large chest of drawers which I'm going to give to my aged grandmother who lives in High Wycombe. <laughs> Uh, Kenneth Williams, why the chance? Because he's not discussing creating, he's discussing conversion. You're saying that isn't great. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very clever challenge, but even if you're converting something, you can still be creative. So I think the only fair thing to do is to give you a bonus point for cleverness, Kenneth and leave the subject with Derek with three seconds for creating starting now. So when I go round the house, into the oh, keys, Sheila's got hesitation. his hesitation. Oh, Sheila good for you, go. girl. Yes, you <laughs> uh, Two seconds left for creating Sheila starting now. A man and a woman create babies. <laughs> Before. Well, I didn't think it was winning one. I thought it was that creative thought of yours. That <laughs> anyway, Sheila Zip, and uh, speaking also when the whistle <laughs> went, has given her an extra point, and she now has a lead at the end of that round. Ooh. Sheila, Ooh. will you begin the next round for us? Things I've forgotten about. Will you talk about that, if you can, for 60 seconds, starting now? Well, I've forgotten what it was like to win a game because I am a born loser, so I'm feeling very happy at the moment. I've forgotten... Derek, why have you challenged? Well, she's remembered that how she felt before. <laughs> That's why she's feeling happy since she did. I haven't remembered anything. Yes, it was just nice. a moment. I'm going to try and be awfully fair here, if I can. You Give have remembered, point, but you are still talking about the things that you have forgotten. <laughs> so I will give Derek a bonus point for cleverness, but still leave the subject with you. Right. And there are 53 seconds for things I've forgotten about starting now. Well, virtually anything comes into this category because I have the worst memory on God's earth. I mean, some people say that I can remember faces, but I can't remember names. Well, I can remember neither names nor faces. Uh, Clement Freud, you've challenged. Repetition of names and faces. Yes, and remembering them yes. too. So, Clement, you have another point and you take over the subject. 42 seconds for things I've forgotten about starting now. I think this is an absolutely impossible subject about which to talk. Kenneth Williams, why have you challenged? Oh, deviation, obviously, if he doesn't want to talk about it, why discuss it at all? <laughs> If it's impossible to talk about out of his own mouth, he has committed himself of deviation. So, Clem, uh, Kenneth, you take over the subject. 37 seconds for things I've forgotten about starting now. They would comprise many of the parts which I have played. And I suppose the reason that they are forgotten is that nature designs the Sheila, brain. Why have you oh, I thought it was hesitation, but he went on all right, so I won't start. <laughs> well, it does mean that as you did challenge, Kenneth gets another point and he continues with the oh. subject for 27 seconds for things I've forgotten about Kenneth starting now. Because if one's mental apparatus really did contain the capacity to store indefinitely, we would all, I suppose, end up stark, raving bonkers. Otherwise... Uh, Derek Never, why have you challenged? Well, he puts it in the future. It's def uh, deviation. He's already a stark, raving bonkers. You don't know what <laughs> <laughs> You're saying that Kenneth is devious because he's stark raving bonkers. And he, no, he's, he's saying, saying he, that he's not. He yet. would become stark raving bonkers. And you maintain that My he proposition is stark was that he is stark. <laughs> I will put this, I will not judge on people's personalities. I will put it to the audience again. Do you think that Kenneth Williams is now, at this moment, stark raving bonkers? <laughs> if you do, will you all cheer? Will you do all the cheers first? Cheers first. Is he bonkers now? Yay! Is he not bonkers now? Yay! They all think you're stark raving bonkers. <laughs> I'm not going to give any points on that. It's not fair. You're being a rotten audience. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. going to charge no points. I'm going to leave <laughs> it with Kenneth Williams. Have been here. Kenneth, there are 18 seconds for things I've forgotten about starting now. And, of course, one of the reasons for this um, curative... Oh. Derek Nimmo, you've chatted. Repetition of reasons. Yes, you've got a uh, reason before. There was also hesitation, but Derek, you, this time I give you a point. 14 seconds, things I've forgotten about starting now. I have an air raid shelter in the bottom of my mother's garden. Uh, Clement, why have you challenged? He's remembered the air raid shelter. <laughs> <laughs> there are things in it that I've forgotten. <laughs> oh! Ah, oh, oh, remember the air raid subject here, Messiter, really? <laughs> All right, now I gave the benefit of the doubt to Derek last time. I gave the benefit of the doubt to Clement. <laughs> Eight seconds left, things I've forgotten about Clement starting now. Filled with a vacuum of mist and fog, rain pelting in through the doors and the windows. Uh, Sheila, why have you chance? I think deviation. What's he talking about? I quite agree, <laughs> Sheila. This time I, I justifiably give you a point. There are two seconds left, starting now. 
Uh, Clement Freud, you're in again. Hesitation. Hesitation. I was drawing <laughs> Fine. One second left, starting now. An afternoon in Rygate. Oh. You do see uh, how our most experienced player of the game, Clement Freud, has got his He's finger on that. He's a cheat. He's not <laughs> a cheat. Let's establish this. We've all got a fair chance in this game, and Clement's very sharp at it. <laughs> and now he's taken the lead. Oh, no, he's not. He's equal alongside the indomitable Kenneth Williams. Hooray! Oh, lovely hours. And I might tell you that in second place, also equal, and only one point behind are the couple on my left. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Talk on the subject, Clement Freud, now, please, if you can, of wit for 60 seconds, starting now. Wit is the sort of thing that you can only talk about if you're on your own. When many of you are speaking in unison, there is a certain witlessness about the conversation which I've often found on this programme. <laughs> the word is also given to describe the occasion seven days after Easter, seven weeks after Easter. Uh, Derek, you challenge one. Repetition of seven. Uh, there was indeed. So, Derek, you take over the subject of wit. Forty seconds, starting now. I like witty folk. I love to hear jolly jokes like, "How does my dog smell?" Horrible. I've got the jingle. Uh, <laughs> 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 my dog's got no nose. How does he smell? Horrible. That's the one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tim and Freud, you've challenged... Repetition. Yes, indeed. I I've heard the joke before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, that is only a clever challenge. It doesn't deserve... It wasn't hesitation. No, you get a point for, for a, a clever challenge, because you may have heard the joke before, but it's now wit still with you, Derek. 33 seconds left, starting now. To wit, to woo, said the owl. Uh, Kenneth, why have you challenged? Repetition of two. <laughs> <laughs> I think in that situation, I must give it to you, Kenneth. Yes, I agree. 30 seconds left for wit, uh, Kenneth, starting now. The best thing was said on this subject, of course, by Alexander Pope. A perfect judge will read each work of wit in the same spirit that its author writ. And wit, in this sense, should be noted very carefully by most of London's critics. There are a load of rubbish, of course. None of them have any qualifications for discussing wit, and yet they all do it with... Mm, what seems to me? <laughs> Sheila, you've challenged. Hesitation. Hesitation. Well, you should let me go on. I'm I know, I agree, after. yes. Oh, well, I know. I Did thought she... you got inhibited about it. Yes, actually. you see, she's inhibited me. <laughs> I thought the critics had inhibited you. <laughs> no, <laughs> they never do. Right, uh, nine seconds left for wit, Sheila, starting now. Wit can also mean canniness or... <laughs> Clement, why have you challenged? Hesitation. Hesitation, yes, but I have to hear you say it in case it's something different which I would disagree with. Clement, four seconds left for wit starting now. So that given number of days after Easter, we come to the celebration of wit. Clement Freud was speaking when the whistle went, then he gains the extra point, and it puts him in the lead equal alongside Derek Nimmo at the end of that round, but only just behind are Kenneth and Sheila. It's anybody's game still. Kenneth, will you begin the next round? The subject, following what we've been talking, is very apt. It's called Talking Sense. Will you speak for 60 seconds on that, starting now? <laughs> Talking sense, I take to mean making your phrases intelligible and comprehensible to your interlocutor. In the famous essay on the subject, Positive Focus Trends by Professor Unwin, he says to rise in the early morning, the waking thoughts of clarity in the Milo, trip over from that very quickly, the ancient Mr. Sparkus. Nimmo, you've challenged. Why? Well, deviation is Why? quoting Professor Unwin, who always talks rubbish anyway, so it's not talking sense. I will give a bonus point to Derek for his challenge, but leave the subject with you, Kenneth, with 40 seconds left, talking sense starting now. You talk sense by very often differentiating between the positive and the negative. You illustrate hot by illustrating cold. Of course, I realise I've repeated myself there, and I'm really shut up straight away. <laughs> <laughs> Clement Freud, you challenged. Deviation. Deviation what? From the subject. Oh, yes, he did go off the subject by saying I'd repeat himself then. Oh, yes! Out of your... Yes! You gave yourself away. Mm. So, there are 28 seconds for you, Clement, on Talking Sense starting now. One of the greatest exponents of this art is Mr. Derek Nemo, who often pronounces his name... Uh, Derek Nemo, why do you chat? Deviation, the name is Nemo, not Nemo. <laughs> oh, really? 
<laughs> Sorry, you were going to say now, that anyway, weren't If you? Clement had then said, I wasn't talking about you, it was a chap I know called Derek Nemo, I'd have left it with him, but he's admitted he was talking about my friend over here. So, Derek, you'll take a point. You take over the subject. 22 seconds left starting. And look the gentle day before the wheels of Phoebus, round about dapples a drowsy east with spots of grey. Uh, Kenneth Williams, why... There's nothing to do with talking sense. This is just reciting poetry. I am talking sense. Poetry can be sense, you know, but he is reciting poetry. So I'll give you a clever point for... A point for clever points. <laughs> I'll give you a point for cleverness. You and should do, because talking is totally distinct from recitation. Yes, indeed. Thank so you. It's a very I'm glad you made that point. <laughs> <laughs> I can't give you two points, Ken, if you've got perfect, one point. Right? And I leave the Sorry. subject because what he was saying was talking sense, whether it was reciting or whether it was poetry or not. So Derek carries on for 11 seconds, talking sense, starting... So I ran down the Strand on a May morning, and there in the middle of the road was a policeman with his hand up, and I said, why don't you talk sense? And he said, I don't, because I'm on point duty. I can't possibly do that when I'm on point duty. I said, you're quite right. I used to say that before. And he said, why not? I should go round the other corner and the left hand side. I said, You've been challenged, Derek. I'm terribly I'm sorry. sorry. Repetition of point duty. <laughs> yes, I'm read the was. Clement heard you repeat point duty more than once. So, Clement, you take over the subject. Three seconds left. Talking sense starting now. The chief defect of Henry King was chewing little bits of... Right, at the end of that run, Clement Freud is a lead of one over Derek Nimmo and the other two a little bit way behind. Sheila Hancock, will you begin the next round? Slimming. Will you talk about that for 60 seconds, starting now? This is a subject that I find the biggest bore on God's earth. Every newspaper you open tells you a new way of doing it. One week you have to eat a lettuce leaf and a banana, the next week you have to have two sultanas and a grapefruit. <laughs> the only way to slim, actually, is to go without food, to fast totally and just have lemon water for three days. This is the way I do it. I step on my scales every morning, and if I've gone one pound over my perfect weight, which I'm not telling you, I then slim for the rest of the day. I go without, say, breakfast or lunch, lunch or my dinner at night until I've lost the two pounds that I've gained. Then I have... Clement, why have you challenged? Hesitation. No, I disagree. Oh. No, no, Sheila has another point. Oh. And 25 seconds for slimming starting now. Then I do exercises, yoga, standing on my head so that all my muscles are tense and I have no surplus flat. <laughs> <laughs> Kenneth, you got in first. No, yeah, it's not deviation. I have a surplus flat where I do my exercise. <laughs> uh, I haven't heard Kenneth's challenge. Oh, I was, she, she, she took words out of my mouth, didn't she? She's, <laughs> she's, she's a BA, you know. <laughs> she is. She don't I go know, around telling everyone, but she's Kenneth, a BA. You challenged for deviation. Well, I was going to, but then she put it right, didn't she? I didn't like to stand yes, on it. Yes, but she put it right a little bit too late. You got in first, and I'm uh, entitled to give you your challenge for deviation mm. because she was referring to her slimming, and I don't think she has a surplus flat <laughs> on her How figure. How do you know? <laughs> you can prove it to us now, if you like, Sheila, or I'll pass it straight on to Kenneth. <laughs> Kenneth, I give you a point. Fifteen seconds for slimming, starting now. Well, this is something, of course, which has never occurred to me. I have always possessed this lithe, supple, rather <laughs> silk-like appearance. Uh, Derek, why are you challenged? Deviation. He's not talking about slimming at all. He's talking about the beauty of his own body, which is... <laughs> Already. <laughs> ah, but Derek, the beauty of his own body might have been achieved through slimming. Kenneth, you've got another point. Five seconds left for slimming, starting now. Indeed, people have commented on it and said to me, do you go on a diet or something? How did it come about? <laughs> 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 So, at the end of that round, what is the score? Uh, Clem is still just in the lead over the other three. Derek, will you begin the next round? My first crush. Can you tell us all about that, Derek? 60 seconds will do, starting now. Her name was Jean Pirrit. She had blue-grey eyes and rather long blonde hair, and she was 13 years old, and she lived behind a high green hedge in the green suburb of Liverpool. I first saw her... Uh, Sheila, why have you challenged? Repetition of green. Yes, there was too much green there, ah. I'm afraid. So, Sheila, you take over the subject. 46 seconds for my first crush, starting now. Was a gentleman called Alan Coast, and please don't write to me if you're listening. <laughs> it was when I was evacuated and he worked on a farm, and for some unknown reason I pretended I was twins. I called myself <laughs> Irene and Sheila, and I completely. Uh, Clement, why did you challenge? Repetition. Repetition. <laughs> 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 
Oh, well, I was all right. dying to hear that. Here's a good story. We, I'll tell you afterwards. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm going to leave it with you, Sheila, because I, I agree it is repetition, but it's one of those clever challenges, but it's still true that she did do this. So a bonus point to Clement for a clever challenge. 31 seconds with Sheila for my first crush starting now. And I pretended that Irene was a nasty... A Derek, why have you challenged? Repetition pretended. She pretended that she was twin. Yes. She pretended. That's right. And also repetition of Irene. Yes. 29 seconds for my first crush, Derek, starting now. We were members of the All Hallows Church Youth Group together, and we used to dance on Friday evenings when we were all <laughs> foregathered. Sometimes we used to go for rambles in the Wirral countryside, and I long remember those blue, sunny days and that far-off spring when we first met. When I last saw her, she was standing on the landing stage at Liverpool and I waved to her from a troop ship as I set out to Cyprus. She was 17 years old and her hair was already tinged with grey. Oh. Deviated load of rubbish I've ever heard in my life. <clears throat> Sentimental, cloying. And if you are, personally, was very. And if you are listening, Jean, please do write. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the end of that round, because Derry Nimmo got another point when the whistle went, he has now uh, taken the lead yeah. alongside Clement Freud. Um, Clement, will you begin the next <clears throat> round? Subject, subject is straining spaghetti through a tennis racket. <laughs> Clement, will you speak about that for 60 seconds, if you can, starting now? The problems about straining spaghetti through a tennis racket is to differentiate the cat gut from the pasta. <laughs> Many people think that it is far easier to strain vermicelli through a badminton bat, but I don't agree with... Uh, Kenneth, why have you challenged? Hesitation. Kenneth has a point. 43 seconds for straining spaghetti through a tennis racket. Kenneth, starting now. Well, the best way to do this is to take the saucepan and pour it over the racket and see that it gets into another dish. I can't really find anything else to say about the <laughs> Derek, why have you challenged? Deviation, because he can't find anything else to say. Well, he may not be able to find anything else to say, but he can still go on talking about it, which is the game, after all. So, Kenneth has another point, and there are 34 seconds left. <laughs> Straining spaghetti through a tennis racket, Kenneth, starting now. The last time I saw this actually executed was in a film, and the bloke doing it was very funny because he got hold of the racket and he held it at a very peculiar angle so that most of the stuff, instead of being strained, so to speak, was all going over him, you see. <laughs> and it was causing an awful Clement lot. Freud, why have you challenged? Deviation. Why? Just, just... He didn't strain the spaghetti. I quite agree. Room. It was going over him, so it wasn't going through the racket, so it's deviation. <laughs> so, Clement... Well, <laughs> Clement. <laughs> uh, Kenneth has just given Clement a tickle for cleverness, and he goes on with the subject. Fifteen seconds left, starting now. The average rate of straining is three pounds of spaghetti per ten minutes, provided there are the requisite number of strings on the racket. Uh, Derek, why have you challenged? Repetition of strings. Yes, you're quite right. We've had strings before. And so there are nine seconds left for you, Derek, straining spaghetti through a tennis racket, starting now. And so I took the thing out of its case, and I went into my kitchen, and very carefully brought the spaghetti to a boil. I then poured it slowly over the top of the rack. Uh, Clement, why have you chance? Deviation. Why? Spaghetti is plural, and you poured it. Oh. Oh, really? Oh. 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 But colloquially what's speaking... What's singular? What's one spaghetti? What, what's one spaghetti? <laughs> what is one spaghetti, Clement? A spaghetti. One spaghetti is it. Well, one no, spaghetti is it. Say? A spaghetti. I said a bowl of spaghetti. spaghetti. I Leaving the chairman, you can't all shout the no, no. Thank you. You're right, Kenneth. And I might tell you, the chairman's got a difficult decision, so whichever way this goes, it's going to be the winner of the show. Oh. And oh, me. Give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that speaking colloquially, and we do speak very colloquially in this show, one would say, referring to spaghetti, that you strained it through a racket. It might be one thing, it might be the bowl of spaghetti. So I think I've decided it is with Derek Nimmer. Do you agree, audience, or not? <laughs> there is one second left, uh, Derek, for the subject, starting now. One pulls the strands through, Derek. <laughs> Derek Nimmo was speaking when the whistle went and because of that last point he got he has now at the end of the final round, which that one must be I'm afraid taken a small lead and become the winner of Just a Minute this week, Derek Nimmo <laughs> Only a 
a little way behind was Clement Freud and only fractionally behind Kenneth Williams and Sheila Hancock. That is all we have time for. We do hope you've enjoyed this particular edition of Just a Minute. Goodbye from us all. The chairman of Just a Minute was Nicholas Parsons. The programme was devised by Ian Messeter and produced by David Hatch.